Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and today we're playing Did You Know They Make Wine? In this box are eight wines that come from places that most people do not associate with wine at all. They were picked by Leon and I will taste them blind to make sure that I don't judge a book by its cover. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to finding out whether there's interesting wine available beside the well-trodden path. So let's go. The wine world is constantly changing, even though it doesn't always look like that. The vine is originally from Asia and was widely planted in the Middle East. There's evidence of winemaking in Iran from 5000 BC, and there's not too much winemaking going on in Asia in general, and in Iran in particular today. There was also a time in the not too distant past when there was no wine production in countries like Australia, New Zealand, the USA, Argentina, and Chile. Even though these countries are still collectively called the new world, they have really arrived in the mainstream today. Wine experts in the first half of the 20th century would not have believed that there will ever be a market for new world wines and that people will be prepared to pay hundreds of dollars for a bottle of one of those wines. And then Penfold's Grange, Screaming Eagle and Alma Viva came along. At the moment we see another slow change in the wine world, partly triggered by climate change but also by a growing interest in winemaking in different places in the world. We see vineyards and wineries popping up in areas that were previously believed to be unsuitable for grape growing. So I'm going to blind taste these eight wines and maybe I'm going to find the next Penfolds Grange. So let's find out what's in the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? Remember Brad Pitt in the movie 7? What's in the box? What's in the f***ing box? No? Okay, sorry. So let's taste. I will blind taste and rate these wines and I will also guess what the grape variety and the origin of the wine might be, even though this will be really tricky today because all of these wines are not necessarily considered classic as far as I know. And I will also add the price of the wine somewhere in the video, even though I don't really know what the price is at the moment. Wine number one is a sparkling one. I can see that by the fact that the opening of the bottle looks like the opening of a bottle of a sparkling wine, but that's kind of all I know. So let's pour it. Yes, it sparkles. So you can see that the color is pretty golden. The bubbles are fairly fine. This is not a sparkling wine glass, so it's kind of difficult to tell what the bubbles look like, but I can see that there's a fine mousse and I can also feel that on my palate. It smells of lemon zest, a little bit of brioche, so there's clearly some evidence of the traditional method of second fermentation in the bottle and then prolonged maturation on the lees. On the palate, this is confirmed. This is quite rich and textural, but the finish is very fresh and very lively. It's a beautiful sparkling wine. It's not the most profound sparkling wine I've ever tasted, but it's definitely not a bad one. I know that this wine is not from one of the classic sparkling wine regions, but if I didn't know that, I might think this is a very high-end Loire Cremant or a really good Cremant de la Bourgogne or maybe a good but not great Champagne. <sighs> so this is pretty good. I'm going to call this a sparkling wine from England. I think this is Chardonnay based and I would guess it retails for around 30 US dollars. So, sparkling wine from, from England, English sparkling wine. So this is quite exciting. It's the Bright Valley Vineyard from Dorset in England. It belongs to the Spurrier family and Stephen Spurrier was probably one of the most influential people in the wine world. He recently passed, but this wine is truly a great legacy. It's 55% Chardonnay, so I'm pretty close on that one too. So I think I'd give myself full marks on this one. So wine two is definitely not a sparkling wine. It's pretty golden in color, so the color is really dark. When it comes to fruit flavors, I get orange and pineapple notes, but I don't think this is an aromatic grape variety. I think it's from a warm climate where the grapes were left on the vine for too long, and it's maybe Chenin Blanc or Chardonnay. On the palate, this is quite rich, round, lacks acidity. There's a bit of acidity, but it kind of stands out, so it might have been acidified. Maybe, difficult to tell sometimes, but in this case, it feels like the acidity 
was added afterwards. And yeah, this is not a great wine. I will rate this wine 64 points and it's difficult for me to say what this wine is, but I would guess it's a Chardonnay that was heavily over oaked and I think it's from a hot climate. So let's have a look. What? <laughs> oh man. Tahiti. It's interesting to have a wine from Tahiti in this tasting. I've never had a wine from Tahiti, I think. But this is actually quite an interesting product. If you read the back label, the vines were planted on their own roots, which is kind of special. And it's actually Carignan, which is, yeah, a red grape variety. So um, they made a white wine out of it, apparently. Do I see a great future for wines from Tahiti? Uh, I don't think so. But you never know. Moving on to wine number three. So let's see. It's a white wine. This wine is really interesting. The nose is actually quite beautiful. It smells of pineapple. There's a little bit of vanilla there. There's also a little bit of lemon zest. Whereas the previous wine was quite oaky or toasted in flavor. There seems to be more of a balance here. So you've got some fruit flavors here, a little bit of spice on the other side. On the palate, however, it's quite rich and the alcohol stands out a little bit. So it burns a little bit, feels like the alcohol is quite elevated. I would rate this 84 points. It's actually really good. It's very interesting. It's a wine that I want to learn more about. This is probably from Southern Europe. It feels old world to me and it feels a little bit warmer, but yeah, probably from the east of Europe rather than the west because all of the west is more well known. So, Sauvignon Blanc de Pucari. What the hell? This is Sauvignon Blanc. Okay, this again is very interesting. This is a Sauvignon Blanc from Moldova. The winery is called Pucari and apparently they are a big deal in Eastern Europe. I've never heard of them, but um, yeah, this is a very different expression of Sauvignon Blanc, which also goes to show that grape varieties don't always taste the same. It's also the influence of the winemaker that changes the perception of the grape variety. For me, this does not taste of Sauvignon Blanc. I don't have the grassy notes. I don't really have the high acidity. Moving on, we are on wine number four. And let's see, let's see what this is. Maybe something exotic. So this is another interesting one. The color is really dark and golden. That doesn't always help you with white wines because it's often very much dependent on the way the must and the wine was handled and not necessarily on the grape variety. The flavor is really interesting. It smells of apricots, bruised apples, so an apple that was hit a little bit and turns brown now, and oranges. I don't really smell any influence of oak here, so it's quite fruit driven. On the palate, it gets really interesting. This is a wine for acid hats. It's quite intense. The acidity is pretty elevated. There's quite a lot of structure here. This is not fresh anymore. It's a bit rough. Even though I've never tasted this wine before, it reminds me of a wine, of my wine, a Riesling that I made a few years ago. It smells of Riesling, but it isn't quite right. So it doesn't really feel like, well, it's a really well-made Riesling. It feels like Riesling. I would rate this 72 points, just because I really like acidity. This is quite strong on the acidity. It's from a cool climate, so I would guess that it's from Northern Europe. Maybe it's from one of those places in Northern Germany, in Belgium maybe, or maybe Eastern Europe. So it could be somewhere in Poland or Hungary maybe, but I don't really know. But I think it's Riesling, it feels like Riesling. So let's have a look. The bottle shape doesn't say Riesling but the label says Riesling. Okay, so this is a 2019 organic Riesling from Vinica Wiljeczka. I probably am not pronouncing this correctly, but it's interesting. I'm glad to see a Riesling in this tasting. I think, especially in Eastern Europe and in Northern Europe or Northeastern Europe, 
There are plenty of opportunities for this grape variety. I mean, Poland, who knows that Poland is making wines, but they are making more and more apparently, and maybe one day they'll be really, really good. So wine five is a red wine, I think. The color is a very light, so it could also be a dark rosé. It has a fairly delicate aroma. It smells of cherries, but also of mushrooms and forest floor. So it smells a little bit of moldy mushrooms. It's, yeah, not very intense, quite delicate. On the palate, it's super fresh and very light. It feels like the alcohol is pretty low, below 12%. I would guess. The tannins are not really there, so there's not a lot of tannic structure here, considering this is a red wine. And yeah, it's a really light, slightly funky wine. I rate this 63 points. It's not really a pleasurable wine, but it's an interesting wine. I want to know where this wine is from, who made this, which grape varieties did this person use. It's interesting. I think this feels like a very light, Pinot Noir maybe, or it could also be a Gamay. It could be another red grape variety. It feels like it's from a very cool climate. So I would definitely say Northern Europe or another part of the world that is really, really cold. Um, maybe this is from Scandinavia. There are some wines coming out of Scandinavia now or the Northern bit of mainland Europe. It could also be from England. They have some red wine making there as well. So let's have a look. What? Okay. Ireland. Fascinating. I lived in Ireland for a while, never really tasted any Irish wines when I was there. And this is, for lack of better words, interesting, but it's not something that I would ever buy again. The grape variety here is Rondo, which is a grape variety that is resistant to fungal diseases, which is a good thing because you will need to spray less in the vineyard and that's better for the environment. So wine number six is again a red wine and this looks a little bit darker. So it's probably, hopefully, not a Rondo. The wine smells of prunes, cherries, blackberries. There's quite a lot of fruit flavor here, not a lot of oak. It's quite intense but at the same time quite elegant and refined. On the palate, the wine is really intense and concentrated and the tannins are quite mellow. The acidity is fairly low and the alcohol is high, so I'd say it's 14 and a half, 15% of alcohol. I think I actually know what this might be, but first of all, I gotta rate it. I would rate this 88 points. I think this is a very good wine, but it's not the greatest of its type and I actually believe this is the original Primitivo, the original Zinfandel. I think this is Tribi drug from Croatia. For me, this smells very much of Zinfandel, but I know that it's not from California. So this could be Croatian Tribi drug. The grape variety originates in that area and then spread first to Apulia in Italy and then to California later on. Oh man, so close and then I messed it up. Maybe I was just playing mind games here, but this is Zinfandel, but not from Croatia and it's not tribute drug, but technically that's the same grape variety. It's from Mexico, from Baja, Mexico. So it's further down south from California and I got the grape variety right at least. I've heard quite a few good things about Mexican wine, but I haven't really tasted many. And this is really solid. I think this is a very good expression of the grape variety. So let's see what's inside bottle number seven. Wine number seven smells intense. There's quite a lot of blackberry jam, cassis flavors, quite a bit of oak or spicy notes at least. On the palate, it's rich and concentrated. There are tannins there, but they are quite round and velvety and the finish is fresh but the wine has quite a lot of body so i'd definitely say it has around 14 percent of alcohol i rate this wine quite high i think it's pretty good i would rate this 90 points for me this seems like a wine from a continental climate so i would guess bulgaria romania it could be croatia and the tree we drug but 
I actually have the feeling that it might be Bulgaria and it's Mavrut, which is a grape variety that is grown quite widely there and produces quite rich and concentrated wines. But this is a bit of a shot in the dark. I don't really know. So let's find out. It's screw cap, which is weird. Oh, wow. Okay. It's a Shiraz from... From where? <laughs> it's a Shiraz from Thailand. That's crazy. Okay, I was completely wrong here, but... Well, I've never had a Shiraz from Thailand in my defense, but this is from Thailand, which is not a continental climate. It's very much maritime and it's tropical and Shiraz is the grape variety, but this works in my opinion at least. It's the 2016 vintage and it's still keeping things together quite nicely and it's a good wine. A wine from Thailand, so what's next? Wine number eight smells of strawberry jam, a little bit of blackberries as well. There's quite a lot of spice notes coming through. On the palate, the wine is quite rich and intense. The tannins are round and there's some freshness there in the finish. So it's a pretty balanced wine. I rate this wine 83 points. I think it's pretty good, but it's not amazing. It reminds me quite a bit of Southern France, of the Southern Rhone, of Grenache, Carignan, Sanso, these types of grape varieties but it's obviously not from there, so where else could it be from? I don't think that those grape varieties are planted a whole lot in Eastern Europe, so it might be from another really exotic location that I've never heard of or don't really associate with wine. It could be from the Mediterranean area, so Northern Africa maybe. Domaine de Sahari. But this is from Morocco. Morocco apparently has a long history with winemaking since Roman times. This is from a high altitude vineyard and it's a pretty interesting wine. I didn't really know that Morocco was producing wines of that type. All right, this was a wild ride. This tasting clearly showed that there are many different places in the world where you can make wine. Not necessarily that all of those places yield great wine, but it was still very interesting tasting all of these different wines next to each other blind and really trying to understand them. My two favorites in the tasting were the Bright Valley Sparkling Wine from Dorset and the Mazoon Valley Shiraz from Thailand. That's definitely something that I never thought I would say. The rest, I mean, there were some really good ones, some really bad ones, but it's definitely interesting to taste these wines and I wanna taste more wines from some of these places like Mexico and Morocco and some of the Eastern European countries. So this was definitely interesting. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, did you know that all of these countries make wine? Comment down below. I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty.